time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now one of the most amusing fellows on the stage or on television with his own private moderator, Jerry Mahoney and Paul Winchell. I'd like to say that I'm really delighted to be back here again. Yes, and I'd like to say that I... I, 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 I. <laughs> hey, who's the new chick? What do you mean? That's Dorothy Kilgallen. Really? Uh-huh. Well, where's Arlene? Well, she's going to sit over here tonight. You mean the girls are switching tonight? Uh-huh. Well, that's all right. You're just as cute as she is any time. <laughs> well, uh, go ahead. You're supposed to introduce Arlene. Oh, you are. Look at the same color hair we got in everything. <laughs> You're supposed to introduce Arlene. Now, look, you introduce what you like, and I'll take care of what I like. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's Jerry Mahoney's ex-girlfriend, but still number one in my book, Miss Arlene Francis. <laughs> I'll win you back. Go ahead and try. <laughs> Later. <laughs> because now I have a very important announcement to make. The prodigal son has returned. Our ambassador of goodwill to Europe is back, and we welcome him with open arms, Bennett Cerf. Thank you. Thank you. It's awfully nice to be back. I understand that some of the most distinguished posteriors in America have kept this seat warm while I was away. <laughs> And while I was doing What's My Line in London, I learned the value to the show of our MC here, how much he means to the pace and the enjoyment of the show. And here he is, Mr. John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We're up to our old tricks tonight and have some modifications, as it were, on the usual pattern. The panel will be very happy to know, I know, that they can now put on their blindfolds. Oh, not again, Jim. Yes, again, I'm Why sorry. Why don't they have them air-conditioned? Air-conditioned blindfolds will be supplied I'll next week. Take it week. off, I think I'm on, I've got a secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll also have our famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just 30 seconds. All set for vacation? You got your Remington Auto Home Shaver? Ah, sure. Now you can take that perfect shave with you wherever you go. It's the world's only two-in-one shaver, the Remington Auto Home Electric Shaver. Plug it into your car's cigarette lighter and shave wherever you go. Or use it at home every morning. It works on both home and car voltage to give cleaner, more comfortable shaves. It's the wonderful Remington Auto Home Electric Shaver. And now we're all set for our first contestant, the Blindfolds All-In-Place panel. Yes. yes. Sir. Good. Will you come in, first challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> all right. I would ask you, first of all, if you're familiar with our scoring system, are you? Oh, just slightly. Well, fine. actually, it's very simple. Every time you can give them a proper no, we'll flip a card and ten of these no's, and you've won the game. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's let the folks at home and those who are with us here in the theater know exactly what your line is. Panel, as you don't need to be told, there is an area of identification here which is required that you be blindfolded. It can be in costuming, in the origination of our guest, in the way and manner of writing. There are a great many areas, as a matter of fact, that might both confuse and enlighten you, so we've asked you to blindfold yourselves. We do want to be helpful, so we'll tell you that our guest is salaried, 
And we'll begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you a citizen of the United States? Yes. Were you born in America? Yes. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, do you, would it be possible for you to do your work dressed as Paul and Bennett are dressed now? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Winchell. And there's some special type of uh, garb that you are wearing. Are you wearing this at the present time? Is no. That, that was uh, tough. That's two down <laughs> to go, Miss Francis. Oh, that's too bad, Paul. Yeah, before I started. Yes, if Jerry had been up here, you wouldn't have had such a bad time. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> um, but you do usually in your job wear some kind of special coverall or uniform or costume. Yes. Um, do you perform at a place where people can watch you? Yes. Do people watch you? At times, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer to that would be yes, Miss Francis. Does he need watching? <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, yes. There are a lot of fellows who think he does, I'll say that. <laughs> is there anything about your work that is entertaining? Yes. Uh, do people pay to see you? Yes. Uh, do you perform, uh, are you a performer? Yes. I would think in the general use of the word entertainment, as you have just used it, we would have to admit that our guest was, in uh -huh. that sense, a performer, yes. Would you be seen on television? Yes. Uh, do you work for any special network? N no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, do you ever do your, what, what you do in the great outdoors? Yes. Uh, would it be some form of athletic endeavor that you're famous for? Yes. Is it a uh, sport that is played mostly in the warm weather? Yes. Is I would say this, too, and I think our guest <laughs> would feel it was fair if I were to say that there are actually uh, more than one challenger present. There is more than one challenger present. Rather. Oh, oh. Because I don't want you to get into the sport field and be misled on the basis that there is only one individual. This is leading me astray, I'm sure. Unless you've changed while I was away, John. I haven't. <laughs> uh, would the sport that you're in most often be baseball? Yes. Are you members of the same team? Yes. Is it one of the Metropolitan teams? No. Four uh, down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then you won today. <laughs> <laughs> With Miss Dorothy's position, I'll clarify that statement. All of our home teams here in New York lost on the baseball diamond today. Two was my uh, Even the ones that weren't home lost. <laughs> uh, well then, uh, are you from west of the Mississippi? Of course, my geography no. is so bad. Maybe no. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> five down and five to go, Mr. Winchell. Or would it be important to determine what position you play? It's a team. Let's get the this team is a team? Either Cincinnati or... Oh, no, uh, well, actually, Milwaukee. there's more than one, Paul. That's that oh, I see. We, all we have indicated is mm -hmm. to you, because oh, we want to be fair, that there is more than one challenger here, so that the specific position of one who might answer would uh, not necessarily be helpful. Hey, Lynch. What? What did he say? Who knows? <laughs> Well, then, uh, it's an outstanding baseball team, I imagine, and they're not from west of the Mississippi. Be careful about that Mississippian wine. Yeah, there's an awful lot of teams east of the Mississippi. <laughs> well, we're only two here. Cincinnati and Milwaukee. Cincinnati and Milwaukee are here. Pick one of those, and then I'll get the other. All right, I'll let <laughs> How about Milwaukee? That's no. the boys, <laughs> six down and far to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> no! <laughs> Well, is it Cincinnati? Yes, it is Cincinnati. <laughs> Miss Arlene, this is going to shock you. You can take off your mask because we got the Cincinnati ball team the ball here. Team? Yes. Hey, you know that's that. <laughs> and uh, not only one of the greatest ball players in Cincinnati, but in these United States. Ted Klazuski has been their spokesman.
A first baseman virtually without peers. Since Daly quit the diamond, not, well, no, I can't. <laughs> Where's but your I, manager? Where's the manager? Well, actually, uh, he's resting. He's, he's <laughs> resting. He needs the rest after winning. They won two today from Brooklyn, ten six and two to, two, one. two to one. Two to one. Ted, I wonder if you would take over what I'm sure is a welcome chore and introduce your colleagues, would you? Well, starting here, we have Johnny Temple, Wally Post, Gus Bell, Frank Robinson, Ed Bailey. In the back row, we have. Well, Will you come out so yes. that our friends can see you in the back row, please? Ray Jablonski. And who's over the corner? <coughs> you missed one. Oh, Smokey Burgess. Smokey Burgess. Roy McMillan, Johnny Klipstein, and Joe Nuxall. And there's the Cincinnati Bowl team. <laughs> well, Ted, all I can say is, yes, we Bennett. Have a special bow from the fellow who hit three homers in the first game. Yes, Mr. Ed Bailey. Mr. Ed Bailey, would you take a special bow, please? Well, needless to say, we have had on many occasions reason as a group, my friends on the panel and myself, to feel that um, we had a signal moment on the program. Tonight, we think we've done it again. It's awful good of all you fellas to have come, and we're grateful to you and wish you lots of luck. And even though this is almost heresy being a New Yorker, good luck in the Thank you, Tom. <laughs> good to see you. Thanks very much. I'm afraid... Pardon me, I just wanted to ask you how you were going to split that $30 they won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we'll make some adjustments, which I'm sure will bring everybody home happy. But I'm a little bit shocked. You did too well on that. Let's see what you can do with another challenger while I find this card and get it back up here. Will our next challenger please come in and sign in? Well, I, don't sign in. I got an idea. Tonight, panel, uh, we want to do all sorts of new things, so don't sign in, and we won't tell them where you're from. Let's just... Make them do this completely in the dark. Take a look at the panel. Come with me. I know what a shock that must be to you. Sit down. Do you know how we score this thing, sir? Yes, sir. All right, fine. Let's let the folks at home and our friends in the theater know exactly what your line is. Uh, we're up to all kinds of tricks tonight. We hope you don't mind. We still uh, will give you a little bit of help. Our guest is self-employed. Let's begin uh, the general questioning with Paul Winch. Uh, sir, do you, uh, do you deal in services? Yes. Uh, could I possibly use these services? Yes. I could, huh? Well, might whatever you do make me happy? I hope so. Yes. You hope so? Well, yeah. might whatever you do make me unhappy? Might it well, ever make me... you're getting into a very difficult area, Paul. Well, Let us I'll... say this, that presupposing you had a need for the service and went to get it. Yes. Having gotten it, I am sure you would have a sense of satisfaction because you'd achieved an aim or a goal that you had in mind. There he yeah. goes with the double talk again. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if I didn't need this service and I uh, acquired it, would it make me unhappy? Mm, no. No. I don't think we could say it would make you unhappy. Would you agree to that, sir? Yes. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Do people come to see you? Yes. Do you give them advice ever? Yes. Uh, would you consider yourself in any way a counselor no. for these people? Not as a counselor. There is an element of advice which could be given if requested, but that is not fundamental or vitally necessary to the service performed. Mr. Sir. Do little babies or children enter into your work in any way? Yes. They do? Would, <laughs> would some of the advice or counsel that you give have anything to do with child care or bringing up children or babies? <laughs> no. No. You're not Dr. Spock. I not think, Dr. Right? Spock, no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. And so that you'll not be misled, again, there is an element of counsel that can come with this service. It is not necessary to the functioning, however, or performance of the duties which our guests uh, commits himself to when he is called upon. Miss Kilgall. Do grown-ups chiefly use your service? Yes. But children could benefit yes, by what indeed. you do. And they come to see you. Yes. Do you work in an enclosure? Yes. Do you e ever wear anything apart from the clothing that you're wearing now? 
No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Winchell. Uh, do you have anything at all to do with medicine? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Uh, are you associated in the kind of work that is um, perhaps for an organization? Does a large group uh, come to, uh, for service uh, from you? Sometimes. You could handle a group of people as opposed to one person? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, is there anything... Um, do you ever touch these people in any way? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Surf. Are you at all connected with education, sir? No. No, not in so tangible a way as to make this um, a part necessary college. part of his functioning. No, that's seven down and three to go. I'm going to give you one more minute because I think you're lost. Miss Kilgallen. Well, now, Mr. X, we're treating your work very seriously, I suppose, because you look so dignified. Is there anything amusing or entertaining about what you do? Yes. Yes, in a... <laughs> I mean, in, in a very general way, it could be, Dorothy, but here again, this is not necessarily an ingredient of the performance. Well, could I use your service? Yes, said he, hopefully. Uh, I beg your pardon? <laughs> yes, he said, hopefully. Oh. Uh, would I come to you by myself? Yes. I wouldn't have to have anybody else with me. No. And would you speak to me? Yeah, you speak to me. Everybody. <laughs> and would, would I talk to you? Yes, yes. Uh, would you give me anything tangible in connection with this service? Yes. Would I give you anything tangible? Yes. <laughs> Money? Money, yes. But you'd give me something else. Pardon? I'd, uh, you'd give me something else. Would it be made of uh, a solid rather than a liquid? Yes. Would it be made of paper ever? Yes. Could it be made of anything else? No. Go, boy. That makes it eight down. I'm going to fling in the towel, if I may. I ask oh, one no. question, John. All right. Has got anything to do with travel? It could have, Bennett, actually. Now you've, answered your, you've asked your one question. Right. I want you to meet Bennett, Surf, Mr. George Hoxie, who took your passport picture in Oxford, <laughs> Ohio. Oxford, Ohio. <laughs> I think it's only fair to say that Bennett had his picture taken in Oxford, Ohio with Mr. Hoxie when he was out there, and remembering the picture is a good one, he wrote to Mr. Hoxie and had the passport picture sent to him. They haven't seen a great deal of one another, although they you correspond somewhat. You weren't somewhat dressed that radio. way, George. You weren't dressed <laughs> that way. <laughs> Bennett, I haven't had so much fun since you went away. Thank you. And Mr. Hoxie, <laughs> thank you. We tied him in knots. It's grand to have you with us. a lot of fun, and uh, in just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest, but first, a message from Remington Rand. Car wash. One minute. Well, I guess I can spare that. Old bus needs it after the trip I've made. Aren't you getting out, sir? No, I'll stay right here. I've got a little cleaning job to do, too. Boy, have I ever. What a beard. Lucky to have this auto home shaver. Remington did a great thing when they made him. Sure shaves clean and fast. You gotta sell millions of them, one for every guy with a car. Boy, look at that beard go. Like Dick Stark says in TV, man size. How about this guy? Shaving in his car. Oh, they come at the home. How'd they do it? He's got one of them new Remington auto home shavers. Changes your home bonus to whatever your car's got. Pretty nifty. Plugs right into the cigarette lighter socket. There we are. Clean as a whistle. 
You know, this modern world's pretty great. I just got a clean car and a clean shave, all in one minute. This is the Remington Auto Home, the world's only two-in-one shaver. It changes from home voltage to car voltage with a flick of the switch. Works equally well on either voltage. You can enjoy your auto home shaver on a 15-day trial from most Remington dealers. And look here, any old standard make electric shaver is worth a giant 850 trade-in allowance. Get your Remington Auto Home Shaver tomorrow. Oh, by the way, just first of all, to set any minds that may be turbulent at rest, a check is going to go in the name of the Cincinnati Redlegs to the Cincinnati Sandlot Baseball Fund. Good. That's what's going to happen tonight because the Cincinnati fellows were nice enough to join us. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends are blindfolded once again. They're all in place, are they, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery guest, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise. We'll begin it all with Arlene Francis. Well, that was strange. There seemed to be a hush before our mystery guest signed his or her name. Does that mean that our guest is not known by sight, but known by name? Yes. It's a girl, it's Bennett. Curve. Wake up. Uh, oh, I thought you were waiting. You're going to call me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> is that a girl that answered? That is a female voice, is, is, is it not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gilgallon? I thought Bennett was just establishing something. Oh, all right. Question. Bennett, would you like to ask another question? I do think you have a right to. Have I a right to? Yeah, sure. You're just it, back from England. Is, it a, is yours a face that has ever been seen on the motion picture screen? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Well, then I don't understand why the question, why Arlene's question was answered in the negative. Maybe it was in a mob of extras. <laughs> well, are you an entertainer? What did you say, Miss Kilgallen? Are you an entertainer? In a way. Mr. Winchell? Are you uh, more well known for some other type of work besides entertaining, which encompasses theater and all show business? Could be. <laughs> I think it's about the ball team. Yes. I was just going to say, uh, are two heads better than one over there? <laughs> I think we'd have to admit that there are two heads better than one over here, yes, Miss Frank. There are. Mm. Is that the end of me, or do I get no, another chance? No, you go ahead. That, that was an informational oh, question. Is, is the head that has not been answering so much as the young lady well-known? Yes. Mr. Sir? Would the two of you possibly be co-starring in a motion picture at this time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what did you ask, yes, Philip? Are they co-starring in a motion picture at this time? Well, they sound to they me are. like two ladies. <laughs> Now, I will say this, that so that you'll not be misled, the term co-starring could mislead you. There is certainly an identification as between our two guests and a picture, but not necessarily that of a co-starring role. Swell. Swell. Sure. Uh, is the picture that uh, we are discussing, however vaguely, playing in a first-run house here in New York? Yes. Mr. Winchell? Uh, might this picture be playing at the Paramount? Yes. Miss Francis? I have a certain feeling we know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jack Bennett. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wrong? <laughs> yes, you're wrong, Miss Francis. Is it Miss Saint and her accompanist? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Three down, 47 to go, Miss Kilgallen. Pinky Lee. 
Five dollars, five to go, Mr. Winchell. Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> Six dollars, four to go, Miss Fred. B.S. Pulley. No. <laughs> $7, three to go, Mr. Serve. Zeppo Marx. <laughs> $8, two to go, Miss Kilgallis. Gregory Peck. <laughs> $9, one to go, Mr. Winchell. Kukla, a... Fran, and Ollie. <laughs> no, afraid not. He needs the money. That's why we wouldn't guess it. <laughs> Miss Linda Hope and her distinguished father, Mr. Robert Hope of Los Angeles. <laughs> I would say this, if I may. This is a very dear family, and my only regret <laughs> is that um, Linda's brother, Tony, and her other little brother, Kelly, and Nora, her sister, and her mother, Dolores, aren't here. They're a wonderful family. We had dinner together tonight, Linda and I. Father was off as usual, working. working I thought I'd for... let you grab the check for a change. Well, <laughs> wait till you finally get your bills this month, old boy, <laughs> and you'll see that actually Bob was working as he... He does all the time. He's got a new picture called That Certain Feeling About, which we've been talking, which is doing very, very well. And one reason it is because Robert's in it, and the other reason is because he works so hard. I never knew a man who works so hard in my life. Well, I have to get around. Arlene should know. I was on her show a Tuesday morning. Uh, <laughs> got off the plane and fell right into home. And you've just done another show tonight. That's right. You're the busiest man in town. When'd you find time to get the sunburn? This was at uh, Baldus Roll. I played golf this afternoon. Ah, well, that's, that's nice. I'm glad you had a little had relaxation. Had a nurse carry me all the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robbie, uh, I do thank you so much for coming. How did Steve's show go tonight? Huh? How did Steve's very show go? Very good. Very fine. Very fine. glad to hear No fine. colleague of ours, and that's good Columbus. news. He did. He was yeah. just great. And you have a very beautiful daughter, Bob. Isn't that something? Yes, it's mm -hmm. I hope she's going to make a hot dollar very soon. So I can... <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, thanks so much for coming and for bringing Linda. John, thank you very Wonderful much. Wonderful to have you with us. Thank you. people, and it's nice to have had them with us. And uh, before my friends in the panel say goodnight, here is a word from next week's sponsor. Tennis, anyone? Or swimming? But remember, summer sun is good for fun, but bad for your hair. So guard against dull, dry hair with Helene Curtis Suave Hairdressing. Suave protects against dryness, corrects dryness that hot summer sun can cause. Instantly, Helene Curtis Suave gives life and luster. So, use Suave every day. Liquid or the new Suave Cream. 59 cents and $1 plus tax. I must say that I think we should say, Mr. Hoxie, he must be a wonderful photographer. If you don't remember the man that makes your passport picture, he's doing very well indeed. <laughs> That's for sure. And now, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, John. Good night, John. Ooh, Kimber! Oh, you cannot. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> uh, good night. Uh, just a second. You too, dear. You're not easy to get at. I'll never be the same. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Jerry and Paul. And good night. Oh, Bennett, uh, don't go away again. <laughs> good night, Bennett. <laughs> Mighty nice to be home. Good night, John. Good night. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. This has been a Mark Woodson, Bill Codman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to watch Remington Rand's other television program, The Ernie Kovacs Show, on another network.